Okay, this video is about Thomas Shaw's MD. He's psychology hero number one. I've been working on a talk on food and mood, and uh, I came across him again. I had read about him, a bunch of his books in the past, and he's a brilliant guy. Um, you know, he exaggerates a little bit. You know, most brilliant people do. Uh, but he's got some great insights. Um, his, one of his, his most famous book was called The Myth of Mental Illness, written about 1961. Okay, and I'll just share with you some quotes from him. He lived from 1920 to 2012, and he was a psychiatrist. So here he is, Thomas Shaw's. Mental hospitals are cemeteries for the living dead. Dormitory beds are the grave sites. Psychiatric diagnoses, the grave stones. Psychiatrists, the grave diggers. Patients, the corpses. Okay, next quote from Thomas Shaw's. If you want to exclude people from the social order, you must justify this to others, so you invent a justificatory rhetoric. That's what really nasty psychiatry words are all about. They're just a justificatory rhetoric which le legitimizes the removal of people um, that are labeled as such from society. It's like labeling a package as garbage. Okay, next quote, Thomas Shaw's. Being considered or labeled mentally disordered, abnormal, crazy, mad, psychotic, sick, it matters not what variant is used, is the most profoundly discrediting classification that can be imposed on a person today. Mental illness casts the patient out of the social order just as surely as heresy casts the witch out of medieval society. That indeed is the very purpose of stigma terms. Okay, Thomas Shaw's continues. In the animal kingdom, the rule is eat or be eaten. In the human kingdom, it is to define or be defined. He who defines dominates. That's pretty obvious. When one group is, is defined as evil, bad scumbags, they, no one will listen to them or pay attention to them. And that kind of thing happens in society all the time. Okay, Thomas Shaz continues. The scapegoat is a necessary symbol of evil, which is convenient to cast out of the social order, and which, through its very being, confirms the remaining members of the community as good. So just ask yourself, who today is the scapegoat being cast out of the social order? Is that really a good thing? And what will be the consequences of that? Thomas Shaz continues, Psychotherapy is the medicalization of human social problems through and through, 100%. Psychoanalysis is medicalization squared. Psychiatry is medicalization cubed. Okay, Thomas Shaz continues, The less a person knows about the workings of the social institutions of a society, the more he must trust those who wield the power in it. And the more he trusts those who wield the power, the more vulnerable he makes himself to becoming their victim. Thomas Shaw's continues, the fundamental conflicts in human life are not between competing ideas, one of which is true and the other false but rather between those that hold power and use it to oppress others and those who are oppressed by power and seek to free themselves of it. Thomas Shaw's. Yeah, so Shaw's was very much unhappy with seeing so many patients institutionalized and getting lobotomies. Uh, he was a psychiatrist, and sort of the high point of his practice was in the late mid-years of the 1900s. He did live until 2012. Okay, Thomas Shiles continues. Those who suffer from and complain of their own behavior are usually classified as neurotic. Those whose behavior makes others suffer and about whom others complain are usually classified as psychotic. Thomas Shaw's continues, In the past, men created witches. Now, they create mental patients. 
Psychiatry belongs in the same category as astrology, as pseudoscience. Saying a patient has a mental illness is similar to saying they are possessed by the devil. For example, Thomas Schaus used to emphasize that, you know, when a lady comes in and she's all sad about some problems in her life, she's a human being who's unhappy because she's got some problems at the moment. Okay, It's not the same thing as a depressed patient. He said that these overly medical world, words, even called them dysphemisms, man, meaning that they were unnecessarily negative and they sort of stigma, stigmatized the person. He, he was not a big fan of that. And I like the idea that he said this is an unhappy human being, you know, because a lot of times a person just got a problem, wants some help with their problem. You know, that's different than somebody who is, you know, severely mentally ill and, you know, unable to participate in society at all. Uh, okay, Thomas Schaus continues. Giving children medications for psychiatric conditions is not treatment. It's poisoning. Thomas Schaus continues. As the base rhetorician uses language to increase his own power, to produce converts to his own cause, and to create loyal followers of his own person, so the noble rhetorician uses language to wean men away from their inclination to depend on authority, to encourage them to think and speak clearly, and to teach them to be their own masters. It's Thomas Shaz. Got another slide here. Self-respect is to the soul as oxygen is to the body. Deprive a person of oxygen and you kill his body. Deprive him of self-respect and you kill his spirit. As the internal combustion engine runs on gasoline, so a person runs on self-esteem. If he is full of it, he is good for the long term. If he is partly filled, he will need soon to be refueled. And if he is empty, he will come to a stop. Thomas Schaus continues. Traditionally, men used power to gain sex, and women used sex to gain power. Thomas Schaus continues. People often say that this or that person has not yet found themselves. But a self is not something one finds, it is something one creates. Okay, here's the next quote from Thomas Schaus, and this is a really good one. Because what I've noticed is, like, for example, I know lots of really high IQ doctors, and they're real smart, but they got hardly any intellectual curiosity. You know, a big part of it's because they're super busy. You know, they're trying to do their job, support their families, take care of their kids. They're tired. Um, but you'd wonder, because you know, hear, oh, it's so hard to get into medical school, all these smart people. But I know lots of doctors. And a lot of them, they're real nice. But I know most of them, too. They don't do any outside reading, most of the ones I know. They're just tired. Well, sometimes the older ones are the ones who are reading the most because they're worried about being sick and old and they're trying to help themselves. I find that they're the ones that most like to talk to me, these old doctors, because they're worried about their health. Okay, Thomas Shaz, clear thinking requires courage rather than intelligence. Yeah, that's real true. To think yourself through all the peer pressures and conformity pressures that there are which prevent intelligent thinking. Okay, Thomas Shaz continues. Young and Adler were an improvement on Freud, but they did not go far enough. The key is meaning. It is meaning that sets people free. It is meaning that sets people free. I think that's it. Yep. Okay, hope that was interesting.